can happen anywhere across America. And I think what I personally took from this is a team here in West Texas, in the deserts of West Texas, was maximally prepared at this trauma center to take care of everyone. And I don't think this is beyond us. Anybody can do this. Please be prepared. A team mm -hmm. in West Texas, and he said even the desert was prepared. And we yeah. were prepared for this. Our community was prepared for El Paso. The love, the donations that they gave to those victims. Mm -hmm. And we were prepared here as well, doing the best we could with the chaos in the beginning and just trying to make sense of everything. And as Dr. Sudeep said earlier in the afternoon, the hospital, the blood resources, internal resources, everything was fully stocked and ready to go for an event like this. He said they could handle it. There was no issue there. So the concern wasn't with the supply on the inside. Mm -hmm. His focus actually shifted to how people at home can help. Sometimes we can feel hopeless and we're not sure what to do in situations like this because it's a national event now, but you can make a difference. He mentioned the importance of you at home knowing CPR and even knowing how to stop bleeding. He said that that can actually help first responders who need to respond to these scenes or, you know, they're strapped and being spread in all different directions. Mm -hmm. If you know how to do these small things as a civilian, you can actually help save someone's life. It's so important to be your own first responder mm -hmm. and to be prepared and not scared in these situations. And when you do have that training, you are able to kind of take a hold of the situation, still try to be as safe as possible, but you right. have a better understanding of, you know, you can't ever imagine the situation, but when it does happen, you do have a little bit of that training that will help and save you and hopefully your friends and family. But the CEO of MCH and the doctors have also said that, again, preparing for events like this for years, and they shared with us at the press conference that during an active shooter situation and mass casualty situations that they go into what they called at the press conference operation process and this is three phases it starts with an activation phase mm -hmm. then operation period one and two they completed and then by the time we talked to them around 7 45 they were in the recovery period the hospital was on lockdown it is open right now but the lockdown was for patient and staff security right again making sure they were prepared for that situation and it seems like they were honing in on just trying to save as many people as quickly as possible and try to seclude that area to make sure that they are getting all the resources to those patients in need. Um, it's, it's very important to me, to y'all to know that first and foremost, the, the start this healing process starts within and that this community it needs to love each other and pray for each other and pray for the victims and their families. That's most important is, is to remember those people and to grab onto your loved ones tonight. You know, we always say thoughts and prayers. That's great. But go out there. Take a BLS class. Go out there. Learn about how to stop bleeding. Go out there and practice safety. Don't text and drive. Don't do things where you put yourself and others in danger. And this is something that we can do as a nation. Very, very powerful statement from mm -hmm. Dr. Bose the other day. Um, we're still trying to wrap our minds around this tragic event. We've actually been getting a lot of messages. You all at home have so many questions for us. They're good questions, and we're working on getting those questions answered for you. Again, we will be live at a press conference, a news conference happening at OPD at 12 in the afternoon. Now, we are trying to get more details. We're trying to figure out a motive. Any more information they're able to release to us. I know Chief Gerke mentioned yesterday that he had an idea of who the 30-year-old white man, the suspect, is, but he didn't feel comfortable releasing that. Um, so many things were changing right. as he was even a part of that presser yesterday. So um, he didn't want to release any information, but hopefully um, he feels comfortable and maybe can release something today this afternoon. And Governor Greg Abbott is expected to be there at the press conference as well. We mm -hmm. hear that he is making his way to the Odessa Midland area to uh, try to be here and support our community. But keeping our focus on Saturday's shooting, there were dozens, if not hundreds, who were just innocent by Sanders, who saw the whole thing happen. And right now you are going to hear from a woman, Natasha Rivas, who does talk about the terror she went through just watching. Here's her full interview. Okay, 